Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Today we are going to discuss how to dial in your wedge game. Let's face it, your wedges are your scoring clubs. We need to know precisely what distance every wedge in our bag carries. Not only do we need to know what distance every wedge carries, but we need to know other yardages because there's going to be situations where you may be in between clubs. One way to solve that problem is by generating a different clock system for every wedge. So let me explain this briefly to you. So in the golf swing, we can have three different yardages with each wedge. First, the nine o'clock swing. So nine o'clock swing, I'll take my arm back where it is parallel to the ground. And then I'm gonna still turn through the same swing. The 1030 swing. The 1030 swing, it's gonna be about 1030 on the clock. I'm also gonna turn through the same distance on my swing. And then you have your full swing. Your full swing is, your, is your gen generally your, your full golf swing. That also is going to give you a third yardage with each wedge. Now I play four wedges in my bag. Because I have four wedges in my bag, I have turned these four wedges into essentially 12 different clubs. Now the wedge yardages with these clubs may be somewhat similar on a couple of them, but the difference is it going to be how these balls fly into the green. I'm going to give you a real quick example and then we're going to hit some shots and then take a look at the data. So example, with a 60 degree wedge, if you swing that thing at a full swing, ball is going to get up in the air, it's going to land very, very softly and may even spin back. If you have wind, that ball is going to get really affected by the wind and may blow it to, blow it to the side or may blow, blow it back. You may misjudge the yardage and you might have a flyer over the green. If you hit a shot where you don't hit quite as full swing, so maybe you only take it back to like a nine o'clock swing with a club that is got a little bit uh, less loft on it, for example, playing a 56 or 52 instead of your 60, what's going to happen is the ball is going to fly on a much lower ball flight. It's not going to spin as much and it's kind of come into the green with a much better and controllable trajectory. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit five shots with each club at a nine o'clock, 1030 swing and full swing. We're going to take a look at the data. I'm going to explain to you where you may want to hit these shots and where you may not want to hit a certain shot. Next, I'm going to hit some shots with a 1030 swing. So a 10.30 swing would be a little bit further back. Next is a full swing with a 60 degree wedge. Now I don't usually hit this shot too often because I usually don't want to get the ball to get up in the air, fly up in the air and spin a lot. I want to be able to control the ball flight with my wedges. So usually the nine o'clock swing and the 1030 swing is used more often, but it's nice to know if you've got a shot where you need to get the ball up in the air, just to know how far your 60 degree wedge on a full shot goes. To start off this, take a look at some quick numbers with 60 degree. So first thing you'll notice is my carry distance with the 60 degree was basically 70 yards, 69.5. Carry yardage with the 1030 swing was 84. And then carry yardage with the 60 degree full swing was basically 97 yards. So notice how there is about a 12 to 15 yard gap between each one of those wedges. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna hit the 56, the 52 and pitching wedge to add in some additional numbers to talk about wedge gapping.
Okay, so let's first begin with full swing gapping. Um, firstly, a lot of players may struggle to even learn how to hit the 9 o'clock and the 10.30 swing to start out. So let's just touch on, touch on general distances that we need to make sure we have gapping through the bag. So 60 degree wedge, carry 96 yards, 56 degree carry 111, 52 degree carry 128, and pitching wedge carry 142. So there was about a 13 to 18 yard gap between my full swing with each wedge. That is important. We want to make sure we have good gapping. There's a reason why we have our wedges separated by four to six yards, but sorry, four to six degrees per wedge, um, because we want to make sure we have good gapping through the bag. What I'm also going to bring up here is I'm going to bring up a few other different options here to talk about. So let's first focus on the 60 degree wedge. So the 60 degree wedge, what I have done is I've generated three different yardages for my for my uh, bag. So first thing you will notice the full swing with my 60 degree wedge has 11,200 RPMs of spin carrying 96 yards where my 1030 has 9700 RPMs of spin and my 9 o'clock has 8,400 RPM spin. So if I'm going to hit a shot, a full swing with my 60 degree wedge, that ball is going to spin back once it hits the green. Not only is it going to spin back once it hits the green, but if there is wind, we're going to be in trouble. So another recommendation that I would recommend doing is hitting a shot there where you maybe hit a nine o'clock with your 56 degree wedge that goes about the same kind of distance. So the difference is when I'm hitting a nine o'clock with my 56 versus a full 60 is my carry distance is off by four or five yards, but you'll notice that the spin rate is about two to 3,000 RPMs less. So that is very, very important. I'm gonna bring up a different comparison here. I'm gonna go 56 degree full, and let's do a 52 degree nine o'clock swing. So 56 degree full, once again, spin rate higher than the nine o'clock swing. So 56 degree was basically 10,000 RPMs of spin. My 52 degree spun at 7,800 RPMs of spin. If we take a look at the carry distance between these two, carry distance was 111.7 and a 111.6. So they both carried the exact same distance, but I want to come over here to the right and take a look here, and let's check out the landing angle. So the landing angle and height is quite different. The full 56 had a landing angle of 55 degrees. That's going to cause the ball to spin back once it hits the ground. The landing angle with the 9 o'clock 52 was 47 degrees. So difference there is height. So the 56 degree full wedge is going to fly 22 feet higher than a 9 o'clock swing. Can you imagine your 9 o'clock swing is going to stay under the wind a lot better. So there's a lot of comparisons here. I talk about gapping, I talk about yardages. The conclusion with what we're focused on today is there's more than one golf shot to hit when you have a wedge in your hand. Not only is it important to have you know, two or three different yardages for each wedge, your nine o'clock swing, your 1030 swing, and your full swing. But it's also very, very important to make sure that you have different flights for the shot, depending on whether you have wind or you have a pin in the back or you have a firm greens or soft greens. It's gonna be much easier to hit a golf shot, control the ball if it's coming in a little bit lower with a little bit less spin. Um, so very, very important to talk about with regards to controlling your ball flight with your wedges. Your wedges are your scoring clubs. You dial these in, you know your distances, write down the yardages, and then hit a few different shots with different ball flights with each one just to pay attention to how the ball reacts on the green. So this is some 
really interesting info that we're taking a look at here with regards to spin rate um, and carry distance and how every club does different things around, around the green. So I hope you like this content. If you do, click the like button. And if you can, subscribe to our channel also. We've got some great content coming your way in the future. Thanks for watching.